Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the Innovation Tech Community and uh, today another episode with uh, Josh Lewis with uh, harnessing the power of the AI with the uh, GitHub Copilot. Yeah, so you know everyone knows about this uh, GitHub Copilot, uh, so the new era of AI. So we have to know lots of information about the GitHub Copilot and uh, some uh, demoing with uh, Josh Lewis as well. So he demonstrated lots of uh, demos for you. And uh, he will tell you about uh, how the uh, key roles about the GitHub Copilot and everything. And uh, meanwhile, I'm Pratap Reddy, I'm Microsoft MVP, and uh, I just, and uh, hi, did you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, please let's get started. And uh, I'm at the back end. I would like to uh, present the comments, those who are having any qu questions and everything, I would like to ask you in the middle of the session, if you are okay with that. Perfect. Thank you, Pratap. Yeah, yeah. All right. I just Hello, everybody. Yeah. So I see that. Um, I still see a bit of noise. I don't know if uh, there is a mic open. Maybe you can mute it. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, and thanks uh, for having me in the Global AI Summit. So let's begin. I'm a software engineer, developer at Swiss Life, Swiss company. I'm here with my beautiful uh, cat, which helps me code and helps me relax and distress. I'm also Microsoft MVP and lately digging a lot into AI. And I hope this. 50, more or less 50 minutes, right, Pratap, uh, will be enjoyable and you have fun with that and learn a bit, you let me know. Alrighty, so let's begin. This image shows a developer looking tired, frustrated in front of a computer. It's clearly down outside. It's, uh, it has to spend the night coding, all night coding. I've been there. Have you been there? Probably yes, if you have been at least five years in software engineering. Yeah. So this image is, is very clear. It's uh, sheer frustration, tired eyes. Um, yeah. So I, I guess I hope, maybe I should not hope that, but you have probably been there at least looking at a piece of code for a long time. Yeah, it's that moment when you untangle complex mass of code, you're dealing with these stubborn syntax errors that don't want to go away. And yeah, it's uh, these moments that we feel alone, truly alone. All right, so. This is a variety of coding. It's challenging, it's maddening, it's incredibly rewarding. But on the other side, it's super interesting, super happy when everything works. And guess what? It doesn't have to be this hard because uh, what if there was a tool that could sit by your side? Like when you are doing Steam programming, Steam programming for those that don't know is when you work in a pair, one is the pilot and other is the copilot. It, it takes two persons to write the code, but the, the good things that come with that is that usually you generate the best code ever. Yeah, and also it helps to avoid the struggles and offers a helping hand, why not? All right, that's where a GitHub Copilot comes into the picture. It's not just any tool, it's like having a Copilot, it's like having a friend ready to help you navigate through the complexities, and yeah, maybe it sometimes doesn't get everything right, but other times it, you have this aha moment. Oh my God, this is how, how I would do that. And I had that in the past months with, with this Copilot thing. It's uh, pretty cool, sometimes frustrating, but it also really helps. Copilot in this tale we am telling you today is the hero of our story. But what exactly is GitHub Copilot? Sorry. I yeah, got a bit of a cold, so I need to take regular sips. Um, imagine having a pair programming who's there 24 seven and ready to jump with suggestions, solutions, and even write code for you. This kind of code, the snippets that you don't want to write, or this thing, uh, I have to write this code again and again. Yep. As developers, we are always on the lookout for tools that make our lives easier. And Copilot does just that. 
it's not about fixing errors, it's about enhancing your developer experience, building a complex, um, helping you writing a complex application or working on a side project is there to guide you, offering code suggestions in real time in your editor. But um, again, uh, what is powering it? At the heart of it, it's uh, basically OpenAI. So we have two models. One is GPT 3.5 using OpenAI codecs, which is meant for software, creating software and coding. These are not just fancy terms, they are advanced AI models created by OpenAI. GPT 3.5 is known for language understanding capabilities, while OpenAI Codex specializes in interpreting and generating code. Together, they form the brain of Copilot, enabling it to understand your coding language and provide context-aware suggestions. And context is important here. We will see that in a moment. This is cutting edge. We're talking about AI that can read your code, understand your intent, and predict what you're going to write next. It's sometimes like having an oracle uh, in your toolkit. Or, well, you know, in my case, my girlfriend reads my mind some a lot of times, but <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> um, this is not speeding your coding. It's about enhancing your workflow, reducing um, your um, way to do that. As mentioned, there are um, two methods, right? Uh, one is GitHub Copilot, which is in line with your code. Let's think about that like intelligence in asteroids and GitHub Copilot Chat, which is a more advanced model. It's GPT-4, which is context aware. You open a chat and you chat, and the context is all the code you have open. It's, for me, both have a place to be. We will take a look at both of them today. Again, this is basically your code in context, and it happens in your favorite IDE, either it's Visual Studio, NeoBeam, I never use this one, Visual Studio Code or JetBrains IDE. A lot of my colleagues like it a lot. I don't use it yet. All right. Before we dig in, it's important to understand how does it work? What are the inner workings of it? It's really important to take a look at that. So essentially, GitHub Copilot happens in the cloud. So we have to be aware that we have our IDE in local. If we are working in local, we can also have our development environment in the cloud. If you follow GitHub, you know about code spaces. But let's think you're working on your laptop. You have your um, GitHub Copilot plugin. You need a license. This is a SaaS service and it happens in the cloud. So first you go and have an authorization license check, you receive a token. Once you have the token, you can work for a bit until you need to renew it. And then you send the context from, this is sent to the cloud, to Azure, where is where a Copilot is working. There is a proxy and it delegates the work to one or more LLMs. And when the work is done, it provides suggestion back. That means you need a license, you need a connection to the internet, and your code is traveling. So you have to be aware of that. This is very important. Some companies don't like that and don't allow to work with Copilot. All right, let's proceed. Good. If we dig in a bit more, this is what is happening in the proxy service. So we have this authentication. We have a sentiment analysis. So it detects if you are talking back to it, so don't do that. It goes to the LLM and provides the outcome. And then it has a security filter. This code is secure, can be executed without problems, will not provoke a problem in your systems. It does a PII filter. If I had an audience, I would ask who knows who PII is or what PII is, but yeah. Mm, unless you want to say something, Pratap, but uh, no, then PII is personal identifiable information. So if I put a telephone number there, it will take it away and, uh, sorry, too late, and take it out of the code. 
and then it has sentiment analysis so it detects hate or any abusive uh, comment and will remove it and then it will do a duplicate detection so it's helping us to implement this dry principle don't repeat yourself and yeah, an open source filter so it checks for open source projects and reviews if any part of the code is similar or exactly identical to any in one of the open source project which the license does not allow to use them or part of them all right and if it is it gets removed essentially and this is how it works in the cloud just saying um it will try to use a uh, azure data center which is closest to you but it does not ensure that so your data can get out of the country which companies some of them like mine don't like yeah all right but let's go to the good things what can github copilot do for us mm -hmm. yeah so you can complete code well aside from the fact that it's ai and everybody wants ai as fast as possible and all the companies are like in this ai craziness it really helps you complete comments it's one plate code helping you focus on what's important and it transform can transform comments into code it uh, provides different alternatives sometimes they are good sometimes they are not and um, yeah it understands your our workspace our code context and this is something that's going to evolve this year it <coughs> sorry it was announced in a um, this event that uh, was done end of year in GitHub, uh, GitHub Universe, I think it's called. Um, and uh, they announced a lot of new things coming, right? When you set up Copilot Pro in your company or Copilot Enterprise, you will be able to train with your code base. So it will code as one more coder in your company, which is pretty, pretty impressive and learn not from the context that you have but from the context that you have in your GIT repository which is pretty pretty cool um one thing to say the copilot at the moment has about 4k tokens as uh, soon as the models evolve we will have more i mean we if you follow the news gemini has <laughs> a one uh, i think it's 1000 five well uh think 1020 125 000 tokens is able to handle now and i think it's uh, growing i think GPT delayed the gpt4 is also that high so uh, i believe in a moment they will have all your code in memory and understand it so it's pretty impressive how these things are evolving so what can GitHub Copilot not do for us? So it can not replace developers yet. It requires a developer to initiate the request. It uh, does not work on its own. It needs a click, a mouse or keyboard. It, uh, at the moment, it cannot build an enterprise application with minutes, not yet. And uh, take these with a grain of salt. I believe this is an important moment to learn a benefit and let AI help us. At the end, the more we know how to use these tools, the better our code or our productivity will be. So it's quite an interesting moment, this one we are living. I'm also digging into generative AI for programming agents with semantic kernel. And it's really crazy how things are evolving. All right think it's these, these uh, pillars are quite interesting i don't know if you are in prompt engineering but here it is interesting so you have to provide context this is the information provided in the prompt that helps copilot understand what you want and what it has to do the intent it's the specific goal or purpose you have in your brain when creating a prompt but you know sometimes we like to give things not that clearly we have to be clear with this and that comes to the next point 
the intent sh must be clear. So you have to be not ambiguous and then very specific. That will help it do what you want. So let's code a bit. Uh, in this case, I'm going to change to Visual Studio Code. Just saying I have extensions. Um, I have installed both of them. I believe they are up to date. And should have no code. So could write something. All right. And it's already telling me control I to ask Copilot chat to do something, but I don't want to show you Copilot chat yet. So okay, it's keep giving me some okay, I don't think let me check terminal the book console. Terminal. It takes a look. Read. Uh, I would like, for example, to as uh, on this one. I will do. Mm, I don't like this, so you can press tab if you like it. Uh, all right, that's better. And it more or less has a clear intent of what do you want. And it keeps writing a bit, divide to numbers. And it takes from the context from simple math. So it's inferring just that and starts to provide some suggestions, which I believe it's quite cool. I could do a divide. Hmm, why not? I think it's quite interesting what you can do and yeah so we can write from comments and we can write just write the code Oops. Uh, i would do like a... all right i mean it's really very 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 simple I could I think uh, this one, I'll show you something with this in a moment. But we saw that, we saw a bit of extending comment. This also helps a lot in Visual Studio. So I think should have that. Here I can show a bit how it works. That's, I wanted to see, but didn't show it. So you can see uh, the output of GitHub Copilot. And you can see that uh, the authentication and the service, the telemetry has started. It's requesting the completion. Some parts are canceled. So you can see a bit uh, things. Sometimes it's a bit slow, sometimes it's better. So Right, so I don't know if it's related, but uh, <laughs> it has pretty, oh, I did that many times, but in this project, I don't have anything related to the previous one. So I will undo. And one cool thing is, I think it's control enter, Control enter, 
is one of my top tip, tips that it gives you not only one, so it takes its time and pre prepares uh, 10 different, or if it can do 10 suggestions different, to implement what you wanted. Sometimes it can hallucinate a bit because I never ask it to do a prime number. But yeah, you get the point. So let's back to the slides for a moment. And let me take a sip. So we have seen the most essential things that mostly everybody is doing with GitHub Copilot, but there is more. Uh, this I will skip because um, I recorded the videos um, of how to do things. And yeah, just because it's a cloud service, sometimes it does not work as expected. And then they must end up taking more. And then I can swap to the videos, but it's not the case now. So let's go there. We have this thing called Copilot Chat. I mentioned before it's uh, not just an incremental update, it's a new model. It's a GPT for base at the moment. And probably this will evolve. So they, uh, GitHub does and announce it. It's uh, basically your coding coffee and you can converse with it, you can query it, you can learn from an AI, AI and ask him or it, hey, uh, why did you do this like that, right? So to me, uh, I recommend you not just use it, use it to learn. Use AI to make yourself better, not to make you more productive, because it's it's a paradigm change. All right. And it really brings up the game a notch up. If you are deep into coding and you hit a snag, the function you wrote is not behaving, yeah, ask. GitHub Copilot chat. It's uh, what this function is returning an error. Um, it will analyze your code, provide a clear, insightful explanation. Or if you're working on a complex algorithm and you are unsure of its efficiency, ask Copilot chat, how can I optimize its algorithm for better performance? It will also get a lot of coding challenges really, really, really well. It's impressive. Have you tried it, Pratap? Yes, of course I do. <laughs> I'm using this GitHub Copilot. <laughs> so whenever I am facing any issue in the developer mode, so I need to use the GitHub. Copilot. So they will give you so all the essential. I mean, all the essentials for us. Oh, I think it's I think it's impressive. Uh, what what could I show? I think lead code. Uh, do you know lead code? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, fine. All right, one second. I'm trying to, oh, no things here. Just trying to log in to let code. And I will share it here in a moment. So I'm going to do that pretty, pretty live. So, uh, but I will do that in the demo. So let's finish this section. All right. So again, um, it helps you to optimize an algorithm and optimizing your code and tailor it to your specific needs. Um, again, GitHub Copilot chat is, will help how to, um, it's a text-based conversational model based on an LLM, this case GPT-4. It's able to modify your code and propose changes and insert them in a concrete place it should be. Um, it depends on the integration and the plugin. It keeps changing, so sometimes it does it well. You get a new one and it does not, right? And it's a different model. It's a GPT-4 variation and it's evolving and as we speak. And it's able to explain coding questions, explain code, uh, mix code, generate tests, test RNS. It's uh, well, uh, translate languages, identify issues, and 
many, many, many more, more things, uh, as well as understand our workspace, our code context. And yeah, now it has, I think, uh, 32K tokens uh, the last time I asked somebody from um, GitHub. Um, also, there are some changes that you can see. There is uh, API explain some comments. I think not all of them are available in all the IDEs. I think this was to the code. I think we are hearing you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, Give one second. All right. Second. Sure. And uh, yeah, basically it's uh, it's helping a lot uh, to this. Let's go there. So let's do a bit of the in GitHub Copilot chat. For this, uh, I really like how this part is also implemented here. So you have the chat. If I put the slash, I can explain. I can go here. So it will let me make a bit bigger. I make it the font bigger for you. This part and close. All right. These suggestions, I don't want them anymore. So I click here and it can explain, right? And I can also tell it, hey, uh, fix. I don't tell it anything else. Okay. I'm asking you to make it more reliable, uh, apply defensive programming. Let's see if it gets it. I mean, defensive programming is checking the parameters that they are right before doing anything. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's good. So I could tell it to apply that or fix test. I could even ask it to implement tests for it. I could even tell it, hey, I want you to generate. Uh, yeah, I don't like an unit. I don't know if anybody uses an unit, but yeah, for this, I should create another project and add this code there, but we have the test already. So this is, this is pretty boilerplate coding that uh, you simply dedicate some time into it. And it can be done automatically and you never learn anything by doing that. So it does not really, uh, provide value to you. If you already know, you can get it automated and generated. Mm. The other thing that is, uh, you can ask uh, what is wrong with it. There is something wrong. If you know math, you know that in some cases you can have uh, the buyer by zero, right? Yes. And it will suggest an implementation and improvement for, for that. Yep. Or throw the exception, right? Before it's there. So it can help make your code a lot, a lot better. And if you get to code, it it's really not good. Um, yep, you can you can do that. And let's do one more challenge. I mentioned before. Right, um, it can do to really, really cool things. So I'm going, I'm going hard. I'm going for the hardest of these. And first of all, sorry, I just opened it, and I wanted it. Yeah, we'll check. 
Yeah, I don't care. Uh, but uh, yeah, for example, algorithm. Let's see regular special matching, right? And it gets only twenty eight percent of the questions. Well, I don't know if this will work. All right, so I just copy that. I'm doing that live. I don't know if this will work. And I will give it a, let's go to C sharp. Let's specific, and uh, let's see if we get that properly. All right. Gives explanation how it would do it, and then it gives us the code. And then we can copy it. Yeah. And yeah, I would need to run it, but. Uh, Okay, I would need to run it, but um, I would tell you this probably will work. I I tried it several times. I don't know why I did not have uh, um, the credentials with me, but you can try that if you have access to GitHub Copilot. I I recommend you try that. It's a this moment which is a ah uh, uh, moment. I will take that away. I'll see if I can sign in somehow. But uh, you get you get the idea of uh, what's going on here. It's it's pretty powerful. Uh, I think we explain code. We uh, look at what the problem was in the case of um, division by zero. We got some recommendations how to fix it and uh, created the DS harness. I think in this case, Visual Studio is a bit better than Visual Studio code, but usually the GitHub Copilot team is updating uh, the uh, plugging in Visual Studio Code, uh, the one uh, more often than any other one. All right. So I had as well some demos here. And one thing I find kind of cool is this uh, workspace new uh, feature. I don't know if anybody has played with that, but it's super, super exciting that it can create a complete new code base from zero. It's uh, really, really, really impressive. So I have this demo, but I will try to do it here. So for that, I will keyboard. Uh, snake. Yeah. All right. I'm telling you to create a blank new application with a uh, JavaScript and it proposes a structure with even CSS, uh, JavaScript, and even documentation. Uh, 
And if I go and click create workspace, I have to tell it, hey, uh, I want it, yeah. Let's do that. And it will create the files and build everything. Last time I tried that, it did not fully, fully work. It uh, only thing it takes a bit of moment. So I will swap to the demo. So it's more or less, we have that. Before it was create workspace, so naming and it has changed a bit. And then here it is, I have accelerated. This took like six or seven minutes. Uh, showing here different things. And then uh, the game in this case was working quite fine. So I could eat the apples and, and go through the elements. I also change any toy that I want to go through the walls in the original game that may not be a load. Yeah, but you get the point of it. All right. Then I had a bit of uh, taking a bit of a look and uh, I will make a challenge to it. I don't know if that will work. Let's see if the snake game will work. <laughs> And I put that in Chrome. I think it does not work, but it doesn't matter. So I will go again. Uh, chat, I want the chat, yes. So I want to create uh, in your I'm trying to be even more specific, but last time I tried that, the code did not work, but just to see uh, what level of detail it can uh, generate, all right? So I would generate all this structure for you. And yeah, we'll put it here and it generates all these. So we can wait a bit, but I think this is pretty, pretty impressive what, can do at the moment for you. And along this year, 2024, it will get even crazier. It will get a lot more impressive. I imagine that we will get some new models or improvements on the models because we it's not passing one week that we get one new model this week. We got from OpenAI, Sora announced. I don't know if it's already available. I saw some people sharing it like crazy, but I think it's the already made videos. I think I'm not sure if it's already open in preview. Um, Gemini uh, was, uh, they released the 1.5 version. So quite an update with a lot of tokens. I think it can hold like a doc, 300 pages of documents, which is impressive. And uh, I believe that soon we will have a lot in our plate, able to do a lot more than we have now. So this is taking a bit. Uh, um, no, I don't have a video for this one. So I'm not going to uh, make you wait. 
but you can try that in your own. I think it's just to create me a stock analysis application using Yahoo services, and then being able to do a backtest. A backtest is when you say, okay, if I purchase these in the past, how much money would I have now, right? So it's kind of nailing some intermediate simulations. And it understands that with a three uh, prompt, three, uh, um, three letter prompt, right? It was just a very short one. All right. Stock analyzer app, even created tests, a model. So making it a bit smaller so I can show the text, the stock symbol, price, and date. Nothing that fancy. It wraps the access to Yahoo service. So it seems to be pretty good. And yeah, it, even it gave me some work to do, implement the backtest logic here. So I didn't got everything right. It's a quite a common line thing. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a star, right? And then the test. Okay, yeah. So we, we need to iterate a bit more, still not there. Of course, it choose Microsoft, who else, right, to look at the stock market right now. So I think you get a bit the gist of what is possible today with GitHub Copilot and GitHub Copilot chat. And let me take a last sip of the day. All right. So I think we are almost done. And, uh, now it's uh, the developer that wasn't happy, tired. I hope now you have a, your horizon a bit broader. Uh, you envision a bit the future of software development with AI tools like Copilot. There are more. I think Copilot is one of the best, if not the best, but there are more. But um, I have not played with, with more, at least not regarding development. And we are entering an era where AI is not just assisting, but collaborating. And uh, we can focus on more creative problem things. Um, so if you know what you want, you can go and get it. Of course, it will not always work, but uh, just imagine the possibilities. Uh, these barriers of technical complexities are being thrown, destroyed away and lower a lot. So we will see a surge in innovation with developers of all skill levels, uh, bringing their ideas to life more efficiently. And I would say that's that's a problem because it's empowering a new generation. So these AI tools are helping not uh, developers without experience. And a lot of developers without experience are simply using them and not learning from them. And that's the biggest issue. So if you are one of them, my recommendation is use them to learn, use them to make yourself better. And then you will be able to use it better. I think it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing, but I hope you get the gist of it. And with the vision, I'd like to open the floor for any question you may have. This is your opportunity to dig deeper into anything we have seen today or talk about it today, uh, be it GitHub Copilot, Copilot Chat, or the future of AI coding. Feel free to ask yeah. anything which is in your mind. Yeah, so we have some questions uh, just so yeah i just uh, ping here so one guy is asking so why Git, github copilot we have chat gpt and uh, bot and some other llm right yes um i mean um the chat gpt will mm -hmm. can also help i use it myself for getting some ideas right and um, chat gpt bot or even local models can help you but uh, usually they don't have the context of your code, so they don't know your code, right? That's the biggest benefit. On the other side, you can, if you're asking a question about uh, coding or something really, really new, the code base of the, these models using uh, uh, ChatGPT, uh, sorry, in uh, GitHub Compilot is not up to date. So uh, yeah, then you can only get help from uh, uh, a chat GPT, yeah. which has plugins enabled and can do search. Or even better, you can give it the context yourself. You can create a GPT, give it, uh, you want to do, for example, uh, I know that myself. Um, in fact, is one of the 
videos I have pending to finish editing and upload. I did a GPT. I uh, uh, scraped all the website of Semantic Kernel and put it as knowledge. So I can ask it, hey, based on your knowledge, what do you think about this and that? Uh, and it works. So yes, uh, I think you should use them all together. They both have a, a point. Uh, so the, the question from uh, Monica is, is pretty good. Thanks for that. Yeah, and uh, one more question is, what are the ethical considerations associated with using AI-driven tools like GitHub Copilot in software? I uh, think you froze, uh, Prata, but I, I will respond the, the question. So what are the ethical considerations associated with using AI-driven tools? So yeah, that's a that's tough question. A good one. Uh, and, how to say it? I mean, there's a lot of regulations uh, on, on being uh, brought forward in regards of laws, but uh, so far, the one that affects us as the developers, there is nothing uh, protecting us from at one moment uh, AI taking over, right? So even if GitHub is saying, oh yeah, you need to click, you need to do that, you need to do every time, these things will do more and more and more. And it's yeah. impressive what they can do. Yeah. So I, I, I hope they, they are regulated, but at one moment, I mean, think about that. It's basically a brain that is in the cloud that can do more things and every time it's like a race and all the main companies are working on generating the fastest brightest brain ever right you have uh, microsoft you have amazon you have google you you have even a lot of open source that you can get these brains at the on your computer and make them work and uh, it's uh, at the end it's uh, the, the there is ethical in fact every time you're turning on a model uh, is that really a model or it may have some degree of consciousness some people say that the uh, barred uh, systems have some kind of consciousness and they have identified behaviors that look human-like right uh, think about that every time you make a question a model is created for you yeah. and then power down it's like okay this is born this is killed um, <laughs> Yeah, we are laughing at yeah, it, but like, we are getting better, better. Yeah. At one moment, yeah. it uh, will be a question. And also, uh, we have a lot of companies working in putting robotic bodies to these models. That means they will have a lot better memory. They will remember, and they will be embodied. Yes, yes. And uh, say, I mean, one more question from the Monica as well. Uh, how does GitHub Copilot handle sensitive or uh, proprietary information within the course snippets? And what measures are in the place of ensure data privacy and security? Yeah, that's that's a very good question. Uh, yeah. At the moment, for what I know, uh, we have the thing called GitHub Enterprise, right? So I understand you're asking that for enterprise environment. And this will ensure uh, privacy the the question i have is uh, what about data localization so where your data will be uh, that's something i don't know yet because this is a service that has yet to be uh, published but as far as i believe it's using azure it ensures your privacy it's using um, the most secure environments uh, of microsoft azure so on that part, I think we are safe. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. So that's all for yeah. this uh, question, question spot. And I have one question I just texted here. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, how does GitHub Copilot revolutionize the development process by the harnessing the power of AI? Okay. Uh, I mean, usually, for once, uh, it can detect your problems, it can code complex algorithms, it can see issues in code. You just have to ask it to detect it. Yeah. And I, I believe it's uh, already helping a lot in model plate coding. Uh, this, this part is no discussion, right? It can implement the tests for you. 
then it's yeah. it's done in, in no time and you can iterate on that i, I could have asked now uh, do me extreme cases uh, edge cases and usually that's not that easy and he gets that done in no time so it can speed up your coding if that's not a revolution what is it <laughs> yeah so that's all for the q a and if you have any queries uh, feel free to reach out to josh lewis and he's uh, definitely guide you about this uh, github copilot as well and uh, so that's all for my end so if you have any queries i mean questions or you need to share anything about this session uh, louis yep. thank you a lot uh, pratap um, it's been a pleasure being here thanks for the question very important yeah and again yeah. um I'm saying um, for a .NET developer, mostly, which I mostly am, I decided some time ago to push hard into this generative AI coding, agent programming, which I'm jumping into. So if you're curious, jump into something like Langchain, uh, Autogen, or even better if you are into the .NET um, semantic kernel. It's getting better and better every day, and I'm quite into it. So that's yeah. my recommendation for you. Not just use a tool, to code, use a tool to learn, make yourself a better human. Yes, of Excellent. course. <laughs> yeah, of course. I do agree. Yeah. Yeah, Perfect. So that's all for it. Yeah. So thank you so much, Josh. So, so for having, uh, so you are uh, demonstrating lots of uh, GitHub and chat and uh, and uh, you can show, you can uh, deliver the key points about the GitHub Copilot and how it will be, how it is used for the daily life and applications and everything. Yeah, it was very, very, I mean, I enjoyed a lot of um, the back end. <laughs> so thank you so much. I think uh, so most of the people like texted a person about this Copa, I mean, the GitHub Copilot in the, so it will be streamed on the Facebook as well. Uh, so in the Facebook account, everyone is, uh, uh, I mean, texture like where it's very interesting and very interesting so thank you so much <laughs> Josh, for it. Uh, my pleasure so yeah and i would like to share the screen i mean recording in the meanwhile by the end of the day or tomorrow end of the day so thank you so much Josh. perfect <laughs> and uh, okay. guys uh, you, yeah 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 stay tuned to this uh, innovation tech community we have a few more uh, episodes uh, today so from the 6 p.m to 12 p.m as well i mean 11 p.m as well so we have few more speakers from the abroad as well so they are very excited and lots of people are uh, i mean registered for this event as well and thank you so much Josh. and once again yeah thank you bye fantastic ciao thanks yeah, for yeah. the hosting yeah